for more discussion on the human gene editing controversy, we're joined by Sam Sternberg, Assistant Professor at the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biophysics at Columbia University and co-author of A Crack in Creation, Gene Editing and the Unthinkable Power to Control Evolution. Welcome to the show. Hi, good to be here. So could you please start with a layman's overview of what this CRISPR technology is and how we're most commonly seeing it used? So CRISPR is an incredibly powerful technology to rewrite DNA inside of living cells. You can think of it a little bit like a cut and paste function for the genome, where researchers can design CRISPR to target specific genes and then make modifications to the sequence of DNA in those genes in a variety of cell types. It's been developed uh, first in bacteria, but it can be used in human cells and plant cells, animal cells. And so because of this powerful capability, it's really um, started to uh, affect a large number of different biotechnologies. So why did He Jianhui's use of CRISPR create such controversy, not just in the genome community, but around the world? Well, you know, I think this, uh, this ability to rewrite genetic code in humans, it's incredibly powerful. And researchers, we often make a distinction between editing somatic cells, so cells that would not be passed on to future generations, versus something we call germline gene editing, changes that would not only affect an individual, but be passed on to all of their future offspring. And so that's been kind of a red line that nobody has crossed before. And you know, there have been discussions over the last few years of when would this technology really be ready for making such an advance. And I think there's a broad consensus that Dr. He really moved too quickly in that area before we really understand how safe this technology will be in that in type of setting and whether or not we really understand it well enough for that type of clinical application. So in terms of the fallout, what kind of pressure could this incident potentially put on other genome research? Well, I think the, the concern is that, you know, how is the public going to react to what Dr. Ha did? And is this going to have a negative uh, effect on, I think, some of the amazing research going on to harness CRISPR to treat disease in living patients. There's immense potential to use CRISPR to treat or even cure genetic disease in living patients. There are already clinical trials underway to harness CRISPR as a, as a new approach for treating cancer. And I think the concern is, you know, is this kind of uh, premature use in human embryos going to really affect the way that this technology can mature? And is it going to overshadow the very uh, positive applications for disease in patients living today. And so what are the scientists, you, the, in terms of the steps scientists usually take before taking their research and their findings public, what are you, walk us through the steps. Well, you know, I think a, a huge key is, is proper preclinical pre research in uh, animal models, in cell culture. And in the case of uh, the experiments that Dr. Ha did, he was editing a gene called CCR5, which has been incredibly well studied. But I think one of the key points uh, about the research he did, and again, this is unpublished, so I'm going off of his presentation in Hong Kong last week and some of the limited information that we do have. Um, the changes that were made to the gene, the CCR5 gene in these embryos, it's actually not even clear if that would confer the HIV resistance that was the intended outcome. And so to implant an embryo where we don't even understand the real implications of the mutation that was introduced, I think, you know, that's unconscionable. We really need to have animal models or, you know, experiments where we can actually test the exact mutations made and really be sure that these are safe, that they confer the intended outcome, but also really think about is that the kind of serious unmet medical need that really even justifies the intervention in the first place. So how are the ethics surrounding gene editing and genomics currently governed? Well, that's, that's part of the difficulty. Uh, you know, there's been an international consensus to pause on any applications in the human germline, in embryos, but this is a non-binding agreement between different scientific and regulatory agencies. And I think one of the challenges over the last few years is really understanding how scientists uh, patient advocates, regulators, um, how we can really come to terms with reaching a consensus that will either be binding or will be respected by scientists all around the world. And you know, I think in the US, for example, these experiments would have been legal because they would require prior FDA approval, but those same regulations aren't necessarily in place in other countries. And so, you know, I think the challenge is how do you reach a consensus 
that will um, bridge across international boundaries. We certainly answered some, some very interesting questions there. Thank you so much. Sam Sternberg, the Assistant Professor at the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Phys Biophysics at Columbia University.